Well, greetings there, Blade fans. This old sword's with you once again. So what have we got today? I'm going to call this video The Mighty Mites. Um, small but effective. Um, you pick your title. How about that? And I'll probably come up with one for the video that you'll see before you watch this. But the whole idea here is that these are very small in some cases, right? Such as this uh, Bestec Strelit. Fits right in the hand and disappears. Now, in the past, I've included some of these in videos and uh, gotten a little bit of uh, flack in the comments about, you know, that can't possibly, I would never carry that. It's too small. It's going to break, blah, blah, blah. Uh, well, you know, we're talking here about defensive use of a knife and a certain amount of EDC as well. Uh, something such as this uh, $60 or so uh, Strelit with 14C28N blade uh, that have, was preceded by uh, some in Damascus and some in S35VN and so forth. There were some titanium models that came out first. This is um, very budgety, very small. You can clip it or you can just drop it in the pocket. You can clip it to a shirt pocket. And yeah, it's a push dagger, but it's a claw. And once I have that in my hand, that's about it. I mean, I'm, you make a fist. And even if your hand was shocked and opened up, it's difficult for this to fall out of the hand. That's what I like about it. And it is nasty. Yes, you have to get in close to use this. It's not a sword. You're not keeping your opponent at three feet away. There are implements for that should you want to use them. An extensible baton of 26, 27 inches, a sword, a cane, what have you. But if you're traveling light and this is all you can carry, um, if you can swing your fist like this, if you can punch, then you have an extremely effective weapon against, let's face it, flesh, okay? And um, it's a liner lock. This one happens to be in uh, jade green at G10, but it does come in black and some other uh, configurations. It is. Uh, it can be opened in a wave fashion. It'll catch on your pocket. Or you can use the flipper tab that I first showed you. So that is the Best Tech Strelit. It's a design by Ostop Hell, by the way. It's part of his Bloom or Blossom series or something like that, where he's got a bunch of small knives. This, I feel, is, yes, it's pretty, it's unique and so forth, but it is an extremely effective EDC tactical item to carry with you. Um, got, what do we have? Uh, six items on the table here. Reviews on each of them, by the way, I'm not going to do weights and I'm not going to do measures. Um, it's very light. I mean, it's just like, uh, I think this one's under two ounces. So, I mean, they're nothing in the pocket. Should you want to carry a neck knife? We have the Karaman produced by Columbia River. And designed by, I think it's Dan Foltz. Yeah, that's a Foltz design. Oh, Nick Foltz. Sorry. I'm pretty sure it's Nick Foltz. Uh, he's done a series of these. This happens to be the Karambit style. I would use it less in the Karambit style like this, which you could, than I would use it in the uh, Hawksbill style right here. Okay. Three fingers on, plus the thumb, good grip. You got the little lanyard here. As I said, it can be carried around the neck, comes with a paracord, uh, or you can tuck it into the pocket or use that paracord as a static line around your belt, uh, whatever you choose. This one happens to be in kind of a cool G10 with uh, almost a malachite look there, a couple of layers, black and green. You can reach over the top. It's very secure in the hand, once again, these things are devastating. See if I can grab a piece of paper here to demo that. 
Well, in a departure from my usual paper test, so I've got this bubble wrap plastic, which is sort of fleshy, you might say. And <laughs> there is no effort, no effort whatsoever to get that thing through. And uh, it's fairly sharp on the inner edge as well. Look at that. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's one of those knives, and there are many knives like this out there, where when you're handling it, you have to be careful because we're not used to the point being 90 degrees to the handle. This goes for uh, karambits as well. You know, you're used to holding a knife, and you know where the point is. It's out here <laughs> instead of facing towards you. So, and then once it snags and you pull it, it's going to just rip. Wicked little knife, the Karaman. And again, like under two ounces, said I wouldn't weigh things, but I'm going to weigh it off to the side here. So I don't have to disrupt my display. And I've got ounces going. And it is, yeah, 1.7 ounces. So next to nothing. The Karaman. I'm going to leave them all out of the sheaths. Moving right along, we have something from Bastinelli Knives. Now, this is going to be a few bucks. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, I think he's getting around 300 for this. Yeah, you're going to cringe next to these other knives that are much more budgety. But this is a straight-out push dagger with a Warncliffe or sheep's foot style blade. I would call that Warncliffe. It's got that long, gradual curve at the top and a straight edge. Again, kind of a cross between a claw and a straight-out push dagger. Comes in M390, and it is actually made by Tactile Knives in Texas for Bastinelli. It's interesting that they branded it as such. It has um, the uh, rich light handle in black. It's got a... a DLC coating, I believe, and uh, it is an M390. There's your mag oh, Magna Cut. Ooh. Yeah, that's why you're paying a few bucks, even though there's budgety Magna Cut blades out there these days. Very firm hold, doesn't lock in quite as tight as the um, Strelit, but a good secure grip. Tucks away very nicely in this uh, Kydex sheath that's red on one side, or kind of a, a burgundy, and black on the other with an ulti clip. Of course, you could switch that out for a DCC or whatever. But uh, that packs up quite nicely. And one thing about these, they're all short. You know, they don't, it's not like a straight blade where you've got a big old long handle, you've got a uh, navigate uh, under your uh, your belt or uh, uh, inside your waistband, inside your pocket, whatever. That, again, is the Guilty. He came out with one called the Innocent that's actually even smaller than this. And I think that one was an N690. So that's the Guilty. If you look at them all, you can see how su such a small footprint they have. Um, I'll go up here first. Uh, this is the, I believe he calls it his broadhead from Pinkerton Knives. This is a custom going for about a hundred and a half. Uh, also has uh, this very interesting, uh, I know that just G10 has a name to it. It's made by a specific company and I can't think of it at the moment. Uh, lots of ways to hold this. This is sharp on both edges and very, very Piercy. So, once again, using my plastic wrap here. I <laughs> mean, this this is like butter. I mean, this just this is incredible. Uh, points a little on the fine side, I would say. Uh, so you're not going to want to uh, pry things with it, but it is extremely piercy. Uh, you can use a middle finger hold with two fingers on the sides like this, kind of like a push dagger. It can actually be held, if you get it right, in a pical fashion. A little bit awkward to get that pinky through there. Um, or just kind of a gun grip, kind of a pistol grip here. That is the, uh, the broadhead. I think he does uh, something called uh, 
He's got a Warncliffe model of this as well from, uh, I forget who makes that Warncliffe, Kaiser, I think. And that, that's more on the budgety side. And I think uh, Kaiser is going to come out with something closer to this as well. Uh, this kind of has the original rough uh, finish from the mill uh, that he left on there. Makes kind of an interesting contrast, almost a forged look. Okay, moving on down. Here is a new one, the FLN from TKL Knives. It's a collaboration design between TKL and Jared Neve of Neve's Knives. Um, I've got it in the smallest configuration. It does come where you can order what's called a sentry grip. Sentry or sentinel? Sentry, I think. Um, that actually has a ring incorporated into it. You replace one handle slab. Again, you can see my recent review on this one as well. I prefer this knife in the Hawksbill type hold, using it as a claw. Similar but reversed of the idea of the Elvia knife, which is kind of the same thing point down. Now you could hold this in a karambit grip, you just can't cap this with your thumb. It's a little pointy. Uh, and again, you can order the ringed grip to put on there so you can have it either way. It's just very short in this configuration. Uh, ADC RV2, I believe, on this with his nickel boron finish, which is an impervious, uh, like 70 Rockwell finish that becomes bonds and becomes part of the steel. Um, so you don't have to worry very much about uh, corrosion or rust. But um, it holds really well, and the pinky kind of goes on the base, the pommel of the knife. And uh, for me, that's the way to hold it in a defensive sort of situation. Again, there's not a lot of reach with these. The reach is the full length of your arm, and that's about it. So you don't have like a 7 or 8-inch blade. You don't have a 10-inch buoy, what have you. You've got a short little knife. So, yeah, um, you, you're going to need to get in close, but at the same time, you can go after hands and arms with these little knives as well. And you can incapacitate quite quickly someone holding a weapon or someone, you know, a club or even a fist. But, you know, before you do anything like that, make sure you understand how the laws work in your area and exactly, you know, why you're carrying it. Sometimes we don't think that through, you know, pick up a knife because it's cool to have and uh, carry it, leave it at that. If you ever use it, then you got to sort of figure your way out of uh, a mess. I'm not saying that uh, self-defense is not legitimate, far from it. Here we have the scythe, the folding scythe. This is the original uh, designed by tier one and uh, old squirrel knives and uh, produced by uh, Shielden. They've done a great job, and it's been so successful. They've come out with the XL. They've come out with it in uh, titanium. They're going to come out with it in other handle colors and maybe a fixed blade. Uh, it's just taken right off. Has a wire clip that is deep carry. Would be nice if there was some provision to uh, wave it open, but there is not. It is simply a flipper tab, but very snappy, very positive. And here we have the Pical point down edge end grip where you have this arcing motion that produces the point. Um, don't need to demo this on all these knives, but some of these are just super piercy. You can see that's a pretty thin point, and this is just going to go right in. No effort whatsoever. I mean, especially on that broadhead, you barely need to push. It just kind of goes right in, like I said, like butter. Uh, this can be used in this fashion. You can even get some EDC use out of it, cutting open packages very easily, kind of like a utility knife with a hook or a carpet knife. However you want to hold it. This is the small one. And again, it just fits my four fingers, which really, I mean, that's all you want really, and you can cap your thumb. I mean, it doesn't really need to be any longer than that, but some people wanted a larger one, so they got it. The Shielden Scythe. 
beautiful little beast. So these are small but deadly, small but powerful, small but tactically useful, I think. And I've had some background in the martial arts for uh, well, 50 some odd years. So um, I have to say, I haven't needed to cut somebody and there are people out there who uh, have been in that situation, military, police, so on and so forth. Um, I think uh, Fieldworks or Ryan Atkinson works very closely with a group that has had a lot of experience and Ed Calderon and so forth. So those are the people to talk to about real world, real life experiences. Um, for me, I know how to use these. I know how to carry them. I know how to employ them. I know under the circumstances under which I'm going to use them. But do I want to use them? No. <laughs> it's just an extra margin of safety. And uh, as you're out in your travels, you certainly want to feel safe. So you guys be safe. You be well and take care. And don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. This Old Sword, signing out. See you soon.